Hi, my name is Tony Stagliano. I'm the National Managing Director of the Architecture, Engineering, and Construction Services Group. Tony, we're happy to have you here with us today. Thank you for taking some time out of your day. Why should contractors monitor cash flow? Well, it's pretty basic. It's almost like blocking and tackling in football. Quite frankly, it's the lifeblood of every in business, and especially for contractors. In my career, I've seen more contractors go out of business because of a lack of cash flow than of profits. I've had a number of contractors that I had a very profitable job I'm going to bid on, but I said, how are you going to cash flow it? And they didn't have an answer. What are some of the best practices you've seen for maintaining positive cash flow? Well, there's several. Uh, first, make sure that this is the job you want to bid, that it's a good job. Uh, you also want to build into your contract billing terms that are favorable to you as the contractor. And therefore, your cash will come in sooner than later. And then when you bid the job, uh, when you do your schedule of values, you want to figure out the first things that are going to be done on the contract is where you want to load most of, and it's called front loading, load most of your profits and therefore your cash flow. And then, this may sound trite, but bill early and often, uh, always be on time. Never give the owner the opportunity to say, your, your invoice didn't reach us in time, so you have to wait another month. It takes long enough to collect your money. So good billing practices, uh, and follow-up, especially on the first billing for any contract, especially with a new uh, owner. Follow it. I call it cradle to grave. Who's going to get it? Who's going to sign for it? Who's going to approve it? When? And then just before it's ready to be released, call and make sure everything was fine. The time not to do it is after you figured out that this payment is late, and then they say there was something wrong on your invoice, and therefore, we have to wait another month, and probably the second invoice went out, and that's also going to be wrong, because they're cumulative. Tony, could you address the difference between being profitable and maintaining positive cash flow? Well, being profitable, number one, jobs have to have profit in them, enough to cover not only the direct costs, but the indirect costs. And when you get down to the bottom line, the net income ultimately turns into cash. So jobs have to be profitable in order to generate cash flow. And again, the key to it is billing properly and staying on top of your, your receivables. When the downturn first hit back in 2008, the first thing I said to all of my contractors is, get out there and be the squeaky wheel and collect your money. And those who did are doing very well and those who didn't are suffering the consequences because not everybody has an endless bucket of cash, so to speak. And so when those owners run out of money, you don't want to be the one waiting forever. What are the common pitfalls contractors typically fall into in terms of maintaining positive cash flow? The biggest mistakes I've seen is they don't communicate to their people. They, they don't get them involved at the early stages estimators, project managers. Quite frankly, project managers have a better ability to collect on an invoice than anybody back at the office because they have a rapport with the representative of the contractor who approves the invoices. So you have to start all the way up the ladder and then involve a continual follow-up, tracking, projecting, forecasting, and then knowing exactly on at least a, month, a weekly basis what your forecast was and why it didn't perform as expected if it didn't. But that proves to be the most successful way clients that I've seen and contractors in general to generating good cash flow. Is there one key takeaway you'd like to leave the audience with today? Don't be bashful. Collecting your money is a right, not a privilege. Don't be afraid to ask for it. Tony, again, thank you for your time. Thank you.